Uh, shall we whip the audience up into a frenzy for you first? Give, oh, give you a big cheer and a round of applause. Oh, where, 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 where are you from? Where, where, tell people I'm from Dublin. I'm from Bath. You're not yeah, from Bath. You're not a Bath kid. No, no. I'm and we sorry. Are we going to listen I'm, to you? <laughs> and uh, so, where, where's your restaurant? My restaurant is only down the road, inside within Rosie Malone's. It's a Greek mama's. And Just around the corner. Some flyers there to give away if you want. No problem. Anyone eating there? Any good? Worth a look. Good thumbs up from there. Who taught you to cook then? My mum in the start, in yeah. the beginning then, I, you know, I got into professional cooking in kitchens and that. I've worked a few years with Raymond Lang and yeah. a little yeah. bit in the other side in the cellar so I got everything from there. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, and you, are, they, are they as good as they, they appear on the telly? Or they are. Yeah. 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 We, we do a lot of work with a lot of famous chefs and yeah. Yeah, some of them, uh, you, you actually, everyone thinks they can cook, don't they? Yes, yeah. it's, it's a common, a common misconception. We all think we do, and here, oh, what well, they do? It's a bit like us saying, "Well, everyone can play football," and then you look at some of the football players, and you actually know they're very, very good at what they do. And uh, we recently did some work with uh, Marco Pierre White, and again, um, I've, we've met almost every celebrity chef there is. He was a genius, absolute genius. And um, so, yeah, no, you, you, you've got uh, an incredibly good pedigree there. So, what we need you to do, ladies and gentlemen, is put your hands together and give them a huge round of applause and a bit of a cheer. Come on, make some noise. Make you feel welcome. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, Ben. No problem. So, as I continue now, we're pretty much doing a moussaka, and uh, you just need a few potatoes, slice them up, fry them into sunflower oil, preferably just to keep the wood fine to be light and healthy as much as you can. The next compartment will just be your aubergines. So you're just going to cut it and peel it. Cut it into pretty much same size potatoes. And you're going to roast them. Roasting them keeps them drier so they can hold the oils from the mincemeat and from the potatoes when you put them all together in the tray so it's not overpowering with olive oil it's not going to be greasy as it used to be traditionally very much for us Greeks we can eat it greasy because we love it you guys, you won't, you, you, you will have it on your plate and you'll be like what the hell is that, I'll give it to me please so have you got a pillar guys for yourselves so you can prep the other one for me yeah? The best thing to, to start first when you're doing your moussaka is uh, to start with your mincemeat as it needs a little bit of slow cooking to get it nice and tender and to get all the flavor that you want in there. So I have already started that before I came here today and uh, you just use for about a kilo beef mince, you just then have a big, a large red onion, three, four cloves of garlic, fry them in high heat, sweat them down, add your mincemeat, Turn down your fire, change the color in your meat with, and then just add about 500 grams of your tomato passata. One cinnamon stick, four cloves, one bay leaf. Cook it slow. It's gonna be fantastic like that. Yeah, you ready, guys? Just uh, my own. Set them up. Can I have your help, please? Thank you. Why are they going off there? No idea. Awesome? No idea, I'll wait here. And we have the ones in the back of the room. Because it, that one comes down. Okay. Alright. 
Thank you very much, guys. Just keep the slices about the same size as the, tomato, as the potatoes, and you will be absolutely okay. Set them up on a nice tray, salt and pepper, olive oil, and put it in the oven on 180 degrees, 190 degrees. Just keep checking them, checking them in, taking them out, turn them around. Yeah. And have some olive oil, please. When you will need to make your besom now, it's always good to have a nice red onion or white onion. Only that one. Yeah, that's one. Good and easy. When you make your bessemer, just warm up your milk with a bit of onion in there. But in this case, I wouldn't be putting any bay leaves or anything else in the milk. Just because there is bay leaves and there is cinnamon and there is cloves in the beef mince. So that would just be overpowering for the rest of the food. And also we're going to just add some nutmeg in the end of the bessemer just to bind it together. Obesins in the oven, 190 degrees. Maybe a bit more, a bit faster. Always keep in mind that all your vegetables, such the obesin, the higher the heat, the more tasty it's gonna be. It brings all the sweetness out. If you cook it slow, it's not gonna be good enough. It will never be good enough. While you fry your potatoes, just make sure they're just soft. Just enough soft enough. You don't even need to color them at all. Because they are just they are just the base in the tray of your whole musaka. They're absolutely fine, just like that. And when the mincemeat will fall on top of them, everything will change color in there. Everything will be redder. Just wait a little bit more now for our potatoes and our obesies that are in the oven. Meanwhile, we can't do anything because we don't have room. So, what are you up to? Have you ever been in Greek Mama so far? Any other, any, anybody else besides Lee? Hi, hi, did you like it? How good was it? One to ten? Ten. Uh, I don't believe you. Where are you from? Uh, it, it counts even more. Thank you. <laughs> Just make a smaller tray, Seth. What do you think? So we'll make a smaller tray so we don't keep them waiting. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I think so. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright. Just make sure you turn your obesities in your oven. And then stick down. I think our mincemeat is okay now. You will understand that 
with your mints. When you have your mints like this, it's, it, it, it still keeps liquid in it, but it doesn't come up on top of the mince meat. So you can see everything. You can remove your cinnamon stick out of it. Always it's better when you make a mince meat and you put spices in it. If you have a little net and you put your spices all together in the little net, then you just have to remove your net and it's so much simpler and easier. Because if you bite into a clove, you will regret it. Definitely. So we could start the bechamel now, while our potatoes and our raisins are done. There's some butter. Okay. I know that most of you already know that a, be a, a bechamel basic recipe would tell you to put same amounts of butter and flour and then just add your milk and uh, make it as runny as you would like to. I always put a little bit more flour than butter so I have a thicker base for my bechamel because I find that when you add, the, when you add your milk, when you, when you have a thicker base in the beginning, Adding your milk makes it premium. Mm. Too hot, sir. Take it away. Take it inside, please. So to make our bechamel, we just put our butter down, let it melt in your pan, and then we will, be, we will start adding flour. As you see, I don't weigh any, anything, I just do it by experience mostly, with the eye, how we say. It's pretty easy, you could all do exactly the same thing. You don't need to know many things to do that. You know. We learn that when we are little kids. Our mom says that. So when your butter starts frothing, then you, it's the time that you can start adding some flour in it. Just never leave spoons in your boxes here. Yeah? It's not good. Don't be afraid of the heat. Just gonna help the flour to come together with the butter and there's not going to be any lumps. You need the heat for the bechamel. You just have to act quick, be here and stir all the time. Stir, stir, stir. Can you please remove the potatoes, please? Just leave them there, sir. Thank you. So pretty much this is what is it? Pretty much this is the consistency that you are looking for here. And then you turn, you go back on your fire, and you will start adding your milk. So you will start adding, making your bechamel creamy, nicely runny. And we will add some more ingredients right in the end of the bechamel. How you do it?
If you find it difficult to do it with a wooden spoon, just take a whisk. Always, if, you, if the whisk is a rubber whisk, it's even better. Because uh, the metal whisk just kind of scratches maybe something that's going to get bent a little bit in the bottom of your pan. You don't need to add slowly, slowly. You can even add all of it together as long as you work fast. Otherwise, it's just gonna get stuck. Let's remove. How is that, sir? Is it creamy enough? It looks very creamy. Let's have a little bit more milk, I think. Yeah? When this happens, sir, go around the sides, yeah? Go like that. This is it for you. There you go. Our beans will be ready now in the oven. Just nice and soft. They don't color too much either. We have our potatoes. We have our vegetable. We have our minced meat. We will start picking up the moussaka in just a minute. So, or either a whisk or a fork, please. Awesome. So now that our bechamel is finished, is finished nearly, before we pull it out of the fire, we will grate, let's say, around 100 grams of parmesan. As fine as you can grate it, just to give a little bit more flavor to our bechamel, it fits in there really, really well. Also, we will grate half a whole nutmeg in it as well. Really nice flavor. And the last ingredient that we will put in our bechamel, if we will be able to find it, this will be. An egg, but you you will be adding the egg in the bechamel no? after you pull the bechamel out of the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Why we do that? It stops the egg. It stops the mixture from curdling. Exactly. Because the egg will break Cur down, right? Yeah? Will curdle. curdle. Yes. Fantastic. Can I have an egg, please? Yes, please. Please come on. Thank you very much. Sir. And a whisk. Fantastic. Everything comes together now, isn't it? Let's take butter, right? 
So you will put your personal out of the fire, you don't want it on the fire, you will crack an egg in it, and you just whisk it inside in your bechamel. This will give both flavor, and when your bechamel will be cooked in the oven, it's just going to make it a little bit more dense. So we're okay now, we have everything we need. So we will take our tray, take our potatoes, lay them out in the bottom of the tray as a nice base. And set our aubergines on top of them. Then you're gonna let, we are going to lay down our basements on top of them. Make sure it's everywhere. And then just on top our bassoon. And you will be able to see how good your bassoon is when you actually empty your pan. If you have nothing stuck in the bottom, you have fantastic personal. You know it every time. At least I do. Yeah? Agree? Agree. So this tray, as it is right now, just gonna go in the oven for let's say 15 minutes. Just the best one is just gonna rise a little bit, get a little bit of color, and then you can come and dig in. I do not mind the color. Preferably always on top of the oven. About 15 minutes. Now we can only wait and pray. Make sure that it's going to be alright. So now I'll put the microphone on and say that's done. <laughs> So finally, after 20 minutes, wait, we have it here. It's finally done? Yeah. We suck Beautiful. Up. The color is done. Yeah. Okay. I'm really sorry, but you can't have any. They're not allowing us to give you any. So you can only come and if you want to come, you can come and have some drink, Mama. No problem. Promotion, 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 yeah? Yeah, come to the restaurant. Thank you very much. Get them down to the restaurant. Yeah, you, they should come. <laughs>